Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you so much, Shilpa, for those kind words of introduction. And uh, at the outset, I'd like to thank the entire organizing team, uh, Shilpa, Dr. Neeta Deshpande, Dr. Archana, Dr. Nitin Kapoor, Dr. Sanjay Agarwal, and the entire team for this kind invitation. And uh, thank you for giving me this very interesting topic, because I think each one of us is faced with this question, even at home or even with our clients, right? You go to a supermarket today, and you're left wondering what to buy because everything looks so appealing and there's so much of, uh, you know, claims that are out there that this is diabetes friendly, this is cholesterol friendly, uh, this is good for your weight. So, you know, you often keep wondering what to buy and that's when our patients come and tell us or send us these uh, pictures as to, you know, what should I buy? And um, the first thing, sorry, these slides are taking some time. Yeah. Uh, so I think oats, I think this is something we all know about. Uh, it has the very important uh, soluble fiber, which is beta-glucan. And there's enough evidence there to show that it helps in improving your glycemic control. It helps in improving cholesterol, especially LDL cholesterol, as well as improves insulin response. Now, oats reduces the postprandial glycemic response by increasing the viscosity of the contents of the upper gut, slowing gastric emptying, reducing the rate of starch digestion, and thereby delaying carbohydrate absorption. And again, how much of oats that you should consume? If you look at all the studies that have been done on oats and its hypercholesterolemic effect, three grams of beta-glucan, which, which is equivalent to around 60 grams of oats or 40 grams of oat bran helps in reducing cholesterol by 5%. Now again, we see, you know, a lot of patients tell us that we've eaten oats and our sugars have shot up. And they're wondering why is the sugar going up because of oats. Again, there are different kinds of oats that are there in the market. And this is very important for us to educate our patients about. You have steel cut oats, you have instant oats, and you have rolled oats. Now, instant oats will instantly rise the blood glucose level. So instant oats has a very high glycemic index, whereas steel-cut oats has a lower glycemic index, but it takes longer time to cook. Whereas rolled oats is something that you can make your porridge or your overnight soaked oats, and it has a moderate glycemic index. Now, again, there are studies which have shown that, you know, as compared to rice, Cheerios, or instant oats, Steel-cut oats and rolled oats showed a better glycemic control. Now, ways to incorporate oats in the diet, because not everybody likes oats porridge, but oats is such a versatile grain that it can go in your idli, it can go in the upma, it can go in your atta. It, you know, overnight soaked oats, I think, is very popular now, and children love it. In fact, we do give it to a lot of our kids. Uh, you can make an oats chilla, you can make an oats khichdi, and you mix it with dal, and it tastes really nice. Add a lot of vegetables, so again, the fiber content does go up. A lot of people, at least a lot of clients come and tell us oats is only protein. So I think that's another misconception that most people have. And they'll eat oats and they'll think that that's where they get their protein from. But we know that's not true. And therefore, complementation with the protein source becomes important. Now, cornflakes. I think every child loves cornflakes. And they think it's really easy to eat. And I think for most working parents also, this is a very convenient breakfast to give our children. But let's look at the glycemic index of cornflakes. This is 89. Okay, so it has a very high glycemic index, and that's why when we look at the CGMS graphs, we see an instant spike in blood glucose, a very sharp spike in blood glucose after eating cornflakes. And therefore, for most of our patients, especially with diabetes, we often tell them not to eat cornflakes or have it only when their blood glucose levels are low or they're indulging in some rigorous physical activity. But otherwise, cornflakes is definitely not in our list of, you know, foods that you can eat more often. Now, because it has a lower moisture content, the Available carbs are higher, and as I mentioned, the glycemic index is also high. Now, all brand flakes, you know, you think all brand will be very good for diabetes. And we've, you know, we are also learning. I say our patients are our best teachers. So, you know, they tell us that when they have all brand flakes, also the blood glucose levels really spike. So, not that all brand is better than cornflakes. The, uh, you know, the spike in blood glucose is similar. Now, this is something that I would dra draw your attention to. Now, you know, if you look at the food labels, if you looked at the food labels, Pre-2016, 2018, if you looked at the corn flakes or the all bran flakes, you would have seen in the ingredients there is high fructose corn syrup. Because that time the FDA regulations are not very strict and you only had to mention added sugar and sugar was sucrose. So anything else that went in was not really counted in the sugar. So everything got hidden over there. But in 2018, you know, with the Aaj Se Thoda Kam, I don't know how many of you all know about this initiative by FSSCI and FDA became very strict about the norm saying that you have to add 
all the added sugars. So what are all the added sugars? All of this. So all the hidden sugars have to also be accounted for. And that is why today, you know, and the consumer awareness has gone up so much that now the industry has also woken up to the fact and now has started using other healthier forms rather than using high fructose corn syrup. So now if you look at most of the packaged foods, you will not see high fructose corn syrups, at least in the good, well-known brands. Then comes muesli, another food. Again, muesli, you have to be very, very careful. And when you're counseling your patients on what to buy, you have different kinds of muesli. Some muesli really will spike up the blood glucose levels because, again, there's a problem. Okay, anyway, so it will spike up the blood glucose levels because it has got a lot of, uh, you know, the sugary stuff also in it. It will have dry fruits, it will have raisins as well as sugar. So whenever we're advising our patients to buy muesli, please tell them to buy the high fiber, no sugar added muesli because that has a lower glycemic index. If you look at the glycemic uh, index, it will vary between 41 and 55. And this is what we've got from the University of Sydney glycemic index uh, data. Now, ways to incorporate muesli in the diet. Again, add it to milk or curd and have it, or even you can do overnight soaked, uh, you know, cereal with it. Now, when they looked at, you know, cornflakes versus muesli, cornflakes was having a higher glycemic, I mean, in terms of, you know, rising the blood glucose levels, muesli fed better compared to cornflakes. If you're choosing between the two, muesli is better, and definitely the no added sugar, high fiber muesli. And what I usually tell my patients is you buy it, you buy it like this, and you can add your nuts. So you add your badam and the walnuts and everything to it because then you are anyways enriching it with good healthy fats. You can even add your seeds like chia seeds, pumpkin seeds, etc., sesame seeds, etc. Then we come to quinoa. Again, quinoa is very popular nowadays. It was not so popular in the past. But if you look at the nutritional profile, the protein content is definitely better. And if you look at the calcium also, it scores much better. Now, it is a pseudo cereal and it's good because if somebody has uh, gluten intolerance, quinoa becomes a very good grain to incorporate. Again, you can make a lot of recipes with quinoa. Not everybody likes the taste of quinoa. That's another thing, you know, not everybody likes it. it you have to develop this kind of taste. And you can, again, it's like I said, it's a very versatile grain. The quality of protein in uh, quinoa is definitely better. And therefore, for people who like it, it's a good, uh, you know, grain to incorporate into the diet. And if you look at the fiber content also, it's very high in fiber. For any food to be called high in fiber, it should have at least 6 grams per serving. If you look at quinoa, it has 14 grams in 100 grams. So it is pretty good on the fiber content as well. But, and the glycemic index is also on the lower side. It's 50. And we've seen with CGMS, it really works well because you can add vegetables, you can add protein, and have it as a khichdi with some raita on the side because our Indians still like Indian recipes. You just have to give it the Indian tadka, the twist to it. Now, ways to incorporate it, you can have a quinoa dosa, you can have a quinoa pulao, you can have a one-pot meal. I think this is, again, becoming very popular, especially with working women. It becomes very challenging to cook, you know, like a multi-course meal. So this, again, becomes very easy. Now, this is something, you know, I often hear a lot of celebrity, so-called self-nutritionists uh, to say, you know, amaranth is better than quinoa. And uh, where amaranth is really good, it's really, really good. But for people with diabetes, if you look at amaranth, it has a high glycemic index. The glycemic index is 97 of amaranth. And if you look at the protein content also, it is more or less the same. So I'm not saying amaranth is not better than quinoa, but what I'm trying to say is in case of diabetes, you have to be a little careful because amaranth has a higher glycemic index. So we have to look at ways to bring down the glycemic index of the amaranth. Again, if you're looking at other grains, you have pearl barley, which is again a very ancient Indian grain. It wears very well when it comes to diabetes because the cost of quinoa is also high. It is around 150 to 280 rupees for 500 grams, depending on which brand you're buying. Pearl barley or even today you have different kinds of millets. We've been using a lot of millets in our clinical practice today. So you have foxtail millet, kodo millet, barnyard millet, and they really, really fare very well. So somebody who's not willing to try quinoa or can't afford it, you do have a lot of millets which are there which are lower in glycemic index, very versatile, and it really gives you good satiety, as well as keeps your blood glucose levels, as well as cholesterol under control. So, um, again, there was a study done with rice and foxtail millet. Foxtail millet is another millet that we really use in our practice, and we've seen it's really good in terms of the glycemic response. So, thank you so much for your patient hearing, and I hope I've stuck to time. I'm not sure. Thank yes. you.